Hey guys, Mike here. So today I'm gonna do a type of video that I've actually never done before. I usually don't talk about other YouTubers or anything, honestly. And But something happened Friday. I told the members I'm not gonna send out a private video about the market and stuff like I normally do because my son started spring break and I wanted to spend time with him. And you know, it's like, almost like as soon as I put that out, within like two hours, two YouTubers who you know I have a lot of respect for, who have accomplished a lot, you know, came out and change their stance on the market and then right after that somebody i follow on twitter reiterated their stance they had put out a month ago but all three aligned right with what they were talking about and so the reason why i'm putting this out it isn't to say anything negative about these guys at all i actually like their view and the reason why i watch them and i've always kept up with them is because they put a lot of research in i like their thoughts on the market and they're highly successful people okay so there'll be people out there that's going to tear them down for you know putting this stuff out but it's, it's that's ridiculous to me and you know because it's well thought out and whether you agree or disagree or whatever but uh, there's always haters on both sides of the fence right and so but i think it's important to at least know what they're talking about and why they're making these changes and now i'll, I'll kind of explain a little bit on both sides of what they're talking about if you're kind of confused a little bit of what they're what they're actually talking about uh, and give you a visual on that and so um, you know if you get anything out of it hit the like and subscribe button I really appreciate it and let's go ahead and just get into what Ken says at first because it was very surprising because he never puts out 10 minute videos really ever right I mean he's normally doing two to five minutes somewhere there I don't even think they're monetized to be honest with you this video will not be easy to make I know a lot of people is gonna watch this I'm selling but not everything. I may very well regret the move I'm going to make. But you know, as usual, I'm always transparent. It's not easy, you know. Imagine being judged for every move you make. But I'm letting you know in advance the plans for my portfolio. You will need to take notes as this video is super packed. Right now, we are in the eye of the storm. It seems all calm, but it's going to take a turn for the worse. And so this is the quick list of reasons why he thinks it's going to get worse. The war will drag out. Number two, the price of commodities will stay up. Number three, inflation will be a problem. Before this war, again, I didn't think it was a problem. Nobody expects a war. And number four, the Fed is screwed both ways. With all four assumptions, this is my assessment. It is a risk on environment. From now to mid-year, it's going to suck. And I don't know if your ears perked up when he said risk on in, in the comments of his video when I went through him because I actually asked a question in the comments was he meant risk off. He, he got him mixed up in the comments. He said he screwed up. Trust me, we all do it. It's, <laughs> it's one of those things you don't even notice. So he means it's a risk off environment, not risk on. OK, and so here's what he's doing to, you know, or what his pivot is to right here. OK, this is what I'm going to do. I have two portfolios I share openly. I have a portfolio playlist for full transparency. I do not touch an itchy fingers portfolio. This is my weightage for Tesla and Palantir in my do not touch portfolio. I'm not selling anything from my do not touch portfolio as I remain bullish long term. For my itchy fingers portfolio, I built this portfolio up from 100K to 1.8 million and lately it dropped back down to 1.2 million. I will clear all my positions in my Itchy Fingers portfolio and use this to hedge my portfolio before the FOMC meeting on the 16th of March as I see a rally of stocks into March FOMC. Treasury bonds perform well in risk-on environments where there's a flight to safety. The problem is I have a history with Treasury bonds. TLT is an ETF for long-term Treasury bonds. I recommended TLT back in 2018. Back then, I was teaching thousands of students. Also, back then, I recommended 40% of portfolio to bonds. At that time, TLT price slowly dropped and under immense pressure is because, like, how do you explain yourself when you are the only one that spent months of research only to have so many people question you when the price drops? for whom don't even spend the same amount of time as you researching. Sadly, I took the decision to cut the loss, only proven in hindsight. I was one year too early. I'm still mad pissed about it. Today, I see the same thing happening. I will deploy about half a million dollars to this trade. And so understand, he's not selling everything, right? He's explaining he's got his long-term portfolio, 
not touching it, never touches it. And his itchy fingers portfolio, he I guess is around 1.2 million, uh, I remember correctly, uh, him saying. And so half a million will go into TLT. I don't know what he's doing with the other 700,000 because he also explained in the video he don't believe in holding cash. So that will be interesting to see. What he is talking about though, and this is interesting to see this, that he's saying it's a, a trade, right? It's a short-term hedge, okay? It's not like he's going to TLT forever, long-term investment here. It is a hedge against his portfolio. And I'm gonna show you what I think he's trying to capture here. And at first I was kind of confused, but until you zoom in, you, know, you can't really understand it. So I zoomed in for you here in the last two times. We raised the rates, right? When Fed funds rates go up in the beginning between like six to 12 months, at the top there's TLT. TLT went up, right? And you can see when Fed funds rates come down, TLT does really well, okay? And so that's, I think, is what he's trying to capture. And if you go to the second time here, and we went through 2015 to 2018, let me get it zoomed in just right for you. You can see the same thing, right? As soon as it starts to move up the Fed's funds rate, what happens to TLT? You can see at the top right there, it pops. It goes anywhere from like 25% to 56%. And so you got that, three to 12 month window uh, where this happens. And then as Fed fund rate gets at a certain point, you can see it starts to level off right there. And then when they lower the Fed fund rate, TLT explodes higher. And so I think that's what he's trying to capture with this hedge, which I mean, looks like a pretty good plan when you look at it. If you don't zoom in close enough, you won't get to see that. If you're way out, it'll look like, wait a minute, it's just either gonna go flat or down. But then when you zoom in that, that first little window right there where they raise the Fed funds rate, you can see it moves up because everybody's going into risk off behavior and moving into bonds. So, you know, we'll see if that happens or not. Now, the other one is what, you know, Adam's talking about, right? You know, and so he went on vacation for two weeks. He, he said it was about a 10% chance for a bear market. You know, usually both these guys are very positive about the market. So, um, and then all of a sudden he comes back and he sees what's happening and he says, wait a minute, check it out. Now, at the beginning of the year and last month, I said that the chance of a recession, the chance of a bear market this year was very low, was only like 10%. But you know what, guys? In the last couple of weeks, things have changed. Right? Things have evolved. And I mean, one of the things is, of course, now the protracted war, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine causing commodity prices, oil and gas prices to go really high and, of course, pushing up inflation even more. But there are two things I'm looking at that have really evolved and the chances of a recession the chances of a bear market has have gone up significantly so we're going to talk about what i'm looking at right now now before you freak out remember something you know in life there's no such thing as something that's good or bad all right so a bear market a recession it's not good or bad but it's how you choose to respond to it and what you choose to do about it that makes it good or makes it bad right so this was what happened back in 1990, and this was when um, Iraq invaded Kuwait. So very, very similar conditions. There was a war, oil prices went crazy, and we had this uh, bear market. But the bear market was pretty short, short and sharp, right? It went down the 50 cross below the 150. It was just a 20% drawdown, and it rebounded pretty fast, right? And it took like 65 days to reach the bottom. And right now... Uh, we are already at day 40, right? So, you know, it could wrap up in the next 20 days as well. So this is something that I see. And of course, this is the tweet that came out saying they reiterate what he'd already said the week before about the 40 month EMA on the NASDAQ. And so what he's saying is, you know, this ongoing sell off in risk assets is primarily due to the end of QE and tightening monetary conditions. The downtrend in stocks started months before the geopolitical conflict. And so what he's saying is if you stick this 40 month EMA, which I'm going to show you, you could see the NASDAQ down to 11,800, the uh, SPX to 3,700. And this is what he's talking about right here. This is the 40 month EMA on the NASDAQ. And as you can see, if we follow it back here, there's around the 11,700 mark. If it comes down to that, again, that's a moving average. But if you look right here, 2020 crashed, bounced right off of it. And then if we roll back, you can see 2018 right there, that crashed, bounced right off of it. And we go back again, you can see multiple other times, correction, bounced right off of it. And so then you go back here, bounced off of it, bounced off of it. And this way saying, post global financial crisis okay that's the last that's what i'm saying post and so it's hit off there almost every single time the thing to keep in mind here is one i put this out there because i want you to have the information right because i like these 
people's research always have this kind of videos i like to do so you know as far as the data at least showing you so you can guide your decisions whether you want to hedge whether you want to custom positions whether you want to rotate into different stocks you got that but here's the one thing all of them hold in common and i agree with everything on this is the markets do turn the markets do go higher in the long run just getting through all of this bs that the market has to get through right now with all the turmoil and commodities and russia and you know interest rate hikes and the bond you know don't forget we're taking 1.2 trillion dollars not going to be there in the market anymore because the uh, the fed is not going to be purchasing 120 billion dollars in bonds and mortgage-backed securities so that will go away and so somebody has to fill that void and so you know stuff like that that's all this is right it's painful it sucks i was talking to one of the members today you know it's never fun to go through and so but the good thing is i look at it this way you have some chance to do something maybe people thought we never have, right? What does this force companies like Google and Amazon to do? To do stock splits, right? I mean, some of you may hold 100 shares. Maybe you bought a long time ago. But now a lot of people are going to have a chance to get in and have 100 shares, you know? And so of each one of those, all you have to do is you get five shares of Amazon. You do a stock split, you got 100. If you wait, they're coming down between 120 and $150, you know? So you got a chance to put companies like that in your portfolio, right? That's great opportunities. I don't think that would have happened if it wasn't for this right here so opportunities present themselves i know it sucks but you know what these are good opportunities i also link both videos in the description below so you can watch the whole thing and if you're not subscribed to them you know i would probably subscribe to them if i was you but that's your decision okay so hope you got something out of it hit the like subscribe if you did and i'll see you guys tomorrow